Western Digital, everyone knows they make a lot of hard drives, but I was shocked to learn they make um, more streaming boxes. They may make more streaming boxes than anyone, Apple, Roku, what happened? Users came to us and they said, look, we have all this great content on these devices that you've created for us, but we've only been able to experience it on the laptop screen. You know, how can you help us address that need? So in 2008, we actually decided to launch our WDTV product family and have just seen an overwhelming amount of success as a result of that. And what that's enabled us to do is really bring users access to all their great content in 1080p HD glory on their TV screen at home. And but so you've got a new one. We do. We're really excited about the launch of WDTV Live. Um, this is a 1080p HD streaming media player. And the, what really separates us from the pack is we've really positioned this as not only get access to all the best of the internet services like Hulu Plus and Netflix, um, we're also looking for unique services like Spotify. So we'll be one of the first digital media players that now give users the access to over 15 million music tracks from all the major record labels. Now, I was shocked to learn this doesn't have a hard drive. The previous version of this product doesn't have a hard drive. What's going on? <laughs> well, we love to sell hard drives as a hard drive company, as you know. Mm -hmm. But we also recognize that consumers want to have flexibility in terms of how they access their content. Mm -hmm. So in addition to being able to support uh, external hard drive on the front with the USB mm -hmm. 2.0 port here, as well as on the back, this also has the ability to look at your home network and find shared folders, NFS folders, if you will, that has content available on it. And you can actually stream over your home network directly to your TV using this device as the conduit for that. What does a hard drive maker know about user interfaces? Um, is this usable? You know, it's a critical success factor for us to not just create dumb buckets mm -hmm. uh, of uh, storage, but really helping users manage that content more effectively. So we work with a number of design experts in order to enhance the, or enhance the user experience and make it a really intuitive and simple navigation for users. So when they want to access the content that they want, they could do so very easily. This is great, but um, in a few years, won't I just get this capability with an Apple TV or um, a gaming console? Why does this need to be a separate product category over the long term? Is there a future here? Well, I think we've really separated from the rest, rest of everyone else is we've really married personal content really strongly with all the online services that you can get through those other, those other devices, mm -hmm. as well as internet TV. What we see the future of these products really being as kind of the main hub within the home that allows you to centralize all that personal content that you want to have and then have the ability to access it on the go as well. So not only do you now have the ability to view your content on 1080p HD uh, on your TV screen at home, but I can use my iPad, I can use my iPhone, and I can use my Android devices to access all that same mm -hmm. content as well. Mm -hmm. Will that capability ever be baked into though, a tablet or a, a smartphone or a TV itself? Unfortunately, you know, I, I don't mm -hmm. know the, the direction in which the future is headed mm -hmm. in terms of personal content. All I know is from a storage com mm -hmm. component um, standpoint, what we're starting to see is a lot of um, mm -hmm. discussion around cloud. And what we've been able to do is put some really great uh, personal cloud strategies in place that really allow us to now allow you to have that personal cloud in the comfort of your own home. So with a product like My Book Live, which we have, mm -hmm. you can now connect it to your router at home. And I think people like to know that they actually have their personal cloud, a physical device sitting at home versus um, somewhere uh, in a third party uh, storage mm -hmm. facility. So even if Apple comes out with a product that does all these things and more, they're still not going to get into the hard drive business, not a chance. And they're still going to need someone to serve up a large bucket of bits. And if they want that capacious library and they don't want to spend a hundred grand, they're going to need to come to you. Exactly. Very clever. And what about the product cycles? Um, if I go out and buy an Apple TV and it does everything this does and a hundred, a hundred things or more, am I going to be out looking for a box that does just a little bit more or does that other thing that they haven't thought of or done yet in six months, 12 months later, do the product cycles work in your favor in this kind of business? Absolutely, especially when you're looking at internet TVs. What we're seeing is a lot of services mm -hmm. continually enhancing their, their services on the screen. Mm -hmm. And as a result, what we see is there are some hardware limitations with any hardware products that you put together. What we believe is users are more inclined to replace a $99 product or a $129 product or a $200 product rather than a 50-inch, $2,000 HD plasma product. Mm -hmm. So in terms of finding complementary device solutions that will allow you to still get access to all those internet content services as well as your personal content, we feel devices like this are a lot more easily replaced and upgraded than your TV set at home.